You wanna tell these people out there what time it is? <laughs> This video is not so much about the Leslie Jones vs. Milo Yuppilopicus Twitter debacle as it is about the thick fog of lies and ignorance that obscures a clear picture of what actually happened because of the lies of the media and because of the emotional, reactionary, irrationality of the regressive left who continue to propagate these falsehoods. According to most of the media, the following is what happened, more or less depending on what sources. It all began when Milo made tweets disparaging the new Ghostbusters film in which Leslie co-starred. And then a Twitter war ensued between the two of them in which she was noble and he was racist. After that, according to these sources, Milo coordinated and encouraged his followers to tweet offensive tweets at Leslie, including racist tweets, and this is why Twitter banned him for life. Some even reported that Milo tweeted racist tweets himself. This is not what happened. In a few minutes, anyone with access to the internet and a little bit of critical thinking skills and honesty, honesty with oneself and an objective frame of mind can discover conclusively that the media was reporting falsehoods about this. When it is so easy to find the truth, to find that the media misrepresented this story, one has to wonder, are these media outlets that lazy and incompetent? Or is it on purpose? I mean, if it's so easy to discover the truth itself, and you can discover it by clicking on the links in the description of this video below, I think that the most likely explanation is dishonesty in the media. The media has been lying to serve agendas for a long time, both right and left, and it's becoming more blatant and thankfully easier to see through. Now, if you try to search out the truth of the story, if you Google this story, you will get a lot of links to, to major media outlets that are misreporting the facts, and maybe one or maybe two major news sources that are actually reporting the facts, or that give you the evidence to show you what actually happened. There are a couple of news articles by the hated news source Breitbart. Yes, I know, Breitbart serves a right-wing conservative Republican agenda, and they are often very wrong. Be that as it may, one need not read anything by Breitbart to get to the bottom of this story. One needs simply to click on the pictures of the tweets in the Breitbart articles that lead directly to her Twitter account. So, scroll down to the video description and click on the links to see for yourself. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the truth. Come on now, click on the links and see. They are all still there as of today. Now this blows my mind. There are many people who deny, deny, deny that this ever happened. but. The link is there. You can go directly to her Twitter account and see these with your own eyes. Some people say, oh, her account was hacked. Oh, her account was hacked going back to 2012? No. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Blows my mind how much people can be in denial of this. So as you can see for yourself, this is what actually happened. Leslie Jones have been making bigoted tweets for some years now, going back to at least 2012. Uh, some of them are racist. And they're really not funny, so you can't really count them as jokes. They're just sort of a little scary. Were these tweets really that bad? Well, I don't think so, but what I think is actually beside the point, the point that we will come to eventually. But first, let's finish looking at these tweets. They're so wonderful. Are these really that bad? Well, who am I to judge? I don't know, but this is about consistency and fairness. Now, it's 2016, it's July 18th, Ghostbusters is out, Milo had not made a twit about her yet, and Leslie is already arguing with people over Twatter. She does this all day long, and there is not yet a peep from Milo Yuppilopicus in all of it. Then Milo Yuppilopicus joins in, and the Twatter war between Leslie and Milo Yuppilopicus ensues. In this war, Milo retweets what looks like tweets that Leslie had made, some bigoted tweets. These were not real. These were fake. Who faked them? Who knows? Did Milo make them? Who knows? But he did retweet them and he should have known better. He is supposed to be a journalist, he does write for Breitbart, so he should have fact-checked. And it was very easy to do so, so there's really no excuse for Milo. Sorry Milo fans, but Milo is not perfect and his integrity is lacking. Now, 
Leslie thought these were fake tweets, so she told people that her account was hacked. Well, this is not true. As a result, some people in the media and some people on social media think, oh, her account was hacked. Therefore, all the bigoted tweets that have been coming from her Twitter account were not from her. Well, this is not true, unless you really believe that hackers have been controlling her account going back to at least 2012. Well, if you think that, I have a tinfoil hack for you. Let's be very clear about this. Yes, you can go online and you can find many photoshopped fake tweets that seem to be coming from her, which she never made. These do exist, and that is horrible. However, if you go directly to her Twitter account, and again, the link is in the description of my video here, you can see she did, in fact, make racist tweets going back to at least 2012. So let's break this down now. Number one, Leslie have been making racist tweets for years now. Number two, Leslie clashed with people over Twitter before Milo was involved at all. Three, Milo made a tweet about her, a joke that you can construe as being racist. It is a joke. Whatever. You decide. Four. People tweeted a barrage of racist, sexist, and otherwise horrible tweets at Leslie, as they had been doing all day long. Five. These were not directed by Milo, and he did not call on people to do this. Six. Twitter banned Milo, and their explanation was vague at best. But certainly it was unfair and inconsistent. It was partial. It was biased. It is inexcusable. See, this is a freedom of speech issue. Yes, it's a private company, but this is a tendency we, as a society, need to fight. And if you call yourself a liberal, and you support censorship like this, you're a fucking idiot. You're not liberal, you're illiberal. You are the regressive left. 7. Most of the major media misreported this story. It seems that only a single major news source outlet reported the true facts. And these can be determined to be true facts because they provided direct evidence. Again, scroll down, click on the links, see for yourself. 8. Many people believe these false reports. 9. Even when the evidence is presented, many people will go, La 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 la, no 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 no, can't hear you, na la 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 la, and otherwise freak out. So it seems there's no evidence of Milo inciting his fans to go after Leslie, but did Leslie incite her fans to go after Milo? Well, you be the judge. Uh, let that be a caution to everybody out there in the And Twitter I'll blow street. you up too, so if you tweet me thinking that I'm the only one that's gonna get it, I retweet it so all my followers can see it and get on your punk. <laughs> I made a post, or a few posts, on social media to explain all of this and to see how people responded. A lot of people responded with regressive left ignorance. Most people have been trained to think that a conservative news source must be lying, so it is not worth looking at these news sources. But even when I pointed out that these news sources have links directly to her Twitter pages that prove what they are saying is true, people on social media reacted with hostility. So hostile, in fact, that the posts I made about this in some discussion groups were deleted, other discussion groups banned me from them, and my account was restricted for some time. Predictably, responses range from racist comments themselves, which were disgusting, to accusations against me of being racist for questioning what actually happened. And of course, at the core, this is not a racial issue. This is an issue about fairness from Twitter, and more importantly, honesty from the media. But you see, this is the sort of behavior that we've come to expect from the regressive left, from these illiberal social justice warriors who are censor-happy, who are no-platform-happy people. Well, fuck them. <laughs> so notice we are dealing with two major issues here. One is honesty and accuracy from the media. Most of the media failed on this issue in some way, shape, or form. And two, is fairness and consistency from Twitter. Now, at first glance, it may seem that this is not a free speech issue, since we're not dealing with the government censoring anybody. We're dealing with Twitter, a private business, censoring somebody. But let's move beyond laws and governments for a while and just talk about social stuff, how we act as a society. Is it really wise for private institutions, colleges, and etc., and just, you know, peers and people 
to engage in selective censorship or censorship at all? Ask yourself that. Is it really wise? It is important to remember in George Orwell's book, 1984, a frighteningly accurate prediction of today's society, that it is not only Big Brother who oppresses and censors people, it is people who censor each other and themselves. And, you know, these social justice warriors are very much like the most frightening characters in the book, 1984, which are the youth, the children who have been trained at birth to be politically correct. And this reminds me of a song by one of my favorite bands of all time, Fishbone. By the way, notice the George Orwell reference on this guy's shirt there, Obey. Calls to mind a song by them called Fight the Youth, in which they sing about the children being trained and who do not question what they think inside, which is lax and untrue. These children do not even question anything, and they're reptilian monsters. They're like Hitler youth. They're like today's social justice warriors who are ready to turn anybody in just because they've been trained to do so. There's a lot of really smart people at that company, and they really need to try to start sorting out not just how to protect people like you, but the people that don't yeah. have this public forum, because Period. I think it happens to so many people. And, and I met the, the CEO of Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and he was cool. He was cool. They helped me out. That's good. We got, like, a whole bunch of accounts, you know, uh, taken off of Twitter. Good. We got I cannot stress enough how important it is to read George Orwell's 1984 and Animal Farm as an inoculation against this stuff, to catch what's going on, to see the patterns that are going on. These books are easy to read. They're about junior high school level of reading. In fact, I read it in junior high school back in the 80s. And because I did so, it was easy to see, when they trotted out this political correctness, what it actually is. And if you read and understand these books, it allows you to look past the illusion of left and right politics, this binary view of left and right, and how both of these are used to control people. So I can't stress that enough. Read these books, but that's enough of that for now. I don't want to digress too much into George Orwell, other than to reiterate that Big Brother, or rather Big Mother, has us censoring and oppressing each other. That's good. We got like a whole bunch of accounts, you know, uh, taken off of Twitter. Good. We got so wake up and sharpen your bullshit detectors.